Right, so I'm back off my short, well, not slight, well, it's not short, but, you know, my introduction. Um, and I'm going to teach you how to do the slip knot, the foundation chain, and a single crochet. So, if you've heard me refer to this part of crocheting as a slip stitch, it is not a slip stitch, it is a slip knot, okay? So, to do a slip knot, I personally, I wrap it around my fingers, I pull it off like that. I tuck that up there and I pull it. But I know that's a bit not very easy to take in. So to make it a bit easier, I'm going to show you how to do it super easy. So first of all, get some yarn, cross it over. So you're making like a like a half an infinity shape. And then you take in this bit, you hold it there and flip it over. So you've got what's coming off your large ball of yarn between that little circle there that you've created and then you pinch that bit there you pull it up and you just tighten it now obviously this is this loop is too big to be crocheting with so what you need to do to tighten it is pull and it will tighten or get smaller whatever you want to call it so again like that fold it over so you've got like a Okay, bow, half a bow or half an infinity or cancer research, whatever you want to refer to it as. Pop it over, pinch that bit, pull it up, make sure you've got hold of both ends and pull to tighten. And then what you do with your hook is you slip that into the hole and you tighten it around the neck of your hook. Now to do a um foundation chain, that's obviously a slip knot. It gives you one loop on your hook. See now if I pull, I can loosen it. And if I pull like that, I can tighten it. Now, <clears throat> when you're working with this, you don't want to make it too tight. You want your hook to be able to move in and out with ease. Super duper easy. You know, you can't, you don't want it to be too tight because it just, it, it makes for hard work. So, the next thing you're going to want to learn is how to hold your yarn. So, I've seen people, they wrap it around their finger wrap it around their finger and they somehow crochet like that but I can't do that so what I do personally is I hold it under those three and I wrap it over that one that's just how it works for me that's just how I've learned that is just my technique what you will notice over time is you will develop your own technique of everything everything you do will be true to you so if you find a tutorial even this one if you find the methods too hard Check out other videos because there will be someone out there who will have the same sort of similar technique or something that does feel comfortable to you and you'll be able to develop your skills that way. So, I hold my hook like that. I hold my hook like that with my thumb on the thumb rest and I hold my yarn like that. Now, to create a foundation chain, you're going to learn how to yarn over. So, you've got your yarn, you're yarning over like that. So it doesn't go over the hook like that, it comes around and you yarn over like that. Again, yarn over. And now to start creating the foundation chain, your first chain of your foundation chain is your first yarn over and then you pull it through. Again, you yarn over, you pull through. You yarn over. You pull through and slowly you are the sun is blaring creating a chain now personally when I'm chaining I just do this see now I've got my yarn it's on my hook I'm holding it I've got control over it I'm hooking it you know I've got it like that so it's yarning over but I'm also like manipulating my hook to bring the yarn over as well as using my hand you can always do it like this over and over that's no problem but I do find it easier to just you know include the hook into the mechanism or the method and you do end up being able to work it a bit faster now when you've done a chain as you can see you end up with what looks like a plait it always looks like a plait to me um, lots of little V shapes see them? you're going up like that Lots of little V's. That's how you do 
a foundation chain. So in order to move on to the next step, you're going to want to learn how to count in a turning chain. So for this one, I have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I'm going to crochet some more. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. That's 20 foundation chains. Your foundation chain has 20 stitches. So basically, when you're working back across this foundation chain, you will have 20 stitches. But to have 20 stitches, you need to learn how to do a turning chain. So I've just chain 20, and I know I want 20 when I go back. So to do a turning chain, you're going to need to yarn over once more, pull through, that gives you 21 chains, and then well, it gives you 21 chains, but 20 chains for working with and one turning chain. So you've just worked up your chart, you've just worked up your chain like that. You've done your turning chain. The next step is to turn your work. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it down like that, and you're just gonna face it that way. Your yarn is gonna still be coming from the same direction. You're not gonna be putting your yarn over there because you've come from that direction. No, your yarn is gonna be coming from the same direction and you're gonna be doing the same thing again and again and again. So that is a foundation chain. If you've got lots of little V's, you're on the right track. And you've got whatever thing you're doing, whatever your count is. So let's pretend we're doing 20, like I've just done. So you chain 20, and you're going to be working a single crochet, which means you need one chain to go up a step, which is one turning chain. So um, I'll explain more about turning chains on different stitches, but for now you need to know to do the single crochet, you need one turning chain. So I've got 21 chains on my 21 chains, one is turning chain, 20 for working in. Okay, so the next step will be to learn how to do a single crochet.